The following is a special presentation of KSMQ Public Television. One Wild Ride, Austin Boys Basketball 2012, here on KSMQ, supported in part by l and Boiler Systems, Baudler, Mouse, Foreman, Kreitzer, and Wagner, and the smart choice, Usum Chevrolet. One Wild Ride, Austin Boys Basketball 2012, additional partners are Ameriprise Financial, Davis, Thone, and Kramer, Paul Warleen, and Warleen Funeral Home, and State Farm Insurance Agent, Greg Meyer. KSMQ presents One Wild Ride, Austin Boys Basketball 2012. Every town that has a school cheers for that school's athletic teams. It's a common point of contact that all of the people who live there can relate to, sport. For the Mower County community of Austin, the 2011-2012 boys basketball season was an especially poignant and special one. For the Austin Packers, really, the entire season came down to one last second, come from behind, slam dunk shot in the sectional championship. A single shot that gave the team a big reason to celebrate after three decades of disappointment. And with that come from behind victory over New Prague, the Austin Packers qualified for their first trip to the Minnesota Boys State Basketball Tournament in 30 years. Chris Fadness has been the head coach of the Packers for half of those years, 15 yeah. years, and joins us now on our special. Thanks very much and congratulations. Thanks a lot. It's, uh, it's been a fun ride. Has it been fun or has it been nerve wracking well, more than fun? At the time, it was, it was very stressful. But, uh, you know, when you, when you look back in hindsight, it was a great ride and a lot of fun. And, um, again, just the energy our community gave us was, was pretty special. Fifteen years and uh, 30 years uh, since the last trip to the state, being half of those years, you were the yeah. coach. Uh, and you've had good teams uh, yeah. along those years. But uh, is there a point at a coach's life where you think, well, and this is very frustrating and... Uh, do you ever have second thoughts during those years uh, about coaching? Uh, without question. Uh, we had a stretch probably seven, eight years ago where, quite frankly, we probably had about three to four seasons in a row where the wins weren't coming, uh, at least to the level that we would have liked. And at that point, you started questioning yourself. Maybe I've uh, outlived my stay. Maybe it's time to move on. Maybe the boys need a different voice. Um, so, you, so you start to question some of those things. And uh, really, I sort of evaluate every season at the end as to whether this is something that uh, I can keep doing. Uh, it's Whether it's something or not, I feel like I'm giving back to the kids and uh, whether I'm doing a good job or, or helping them get better. And uh, as long as I feel like uh, I know what I'm doing, uh, as long as I feel like uh, I can help kids get better, well, then I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And so far, the, the positives for me have outweighed the negatives by far. Do those games still irk you from seven, eight years ago? Do they still get you in the gut, or are you able to move on? Uh, you remember, as a coach, you don't forget um, the games and the tough losses. And, um, and, I, and I, maybe you've heard this before. You tend to forget the wins a lot easier than you forget the losses. The losses, as a coach, tend to stay with you a little bit longer for whatever reason. Um, so maybe it's part of what drives us. I think one of the reasons I got into coaching to begin with is in my playing career as both a football player and a basketball player in high school, I felt like there were things left on the field. And, uh, and I thought there were things I could give young people there that, that maybe we weren't going to leave on the field. Um, so I think that was a motivating factor in what I'm doing now. What about this year's team? Let's talk about them a little bit. Yeah. Um, at the season, you said at a banquet recently that it was really a tale of two seasons, that you had a first some struggles early on and then kind of came around uh, around Christmas time. When the season started, were you really having high hopes about the team? Now that the season's over, you can 
let us know what, yeah. what was going on in your mind when the season began. Well, we, we play a lot of off-season basketball and do a lot in the off-season. So coming into the year, we had pretty high expectations. Conference championship, section championship, and we thought we were good enough to win a state title coming into the year. Um, but quite frankly, before Christmas, things were not clicking the way we wanted them to click. And I'm not the type of coach who's going to tell players, okay, you can't shoot that shot. Um, I, I want kids to learn how to play into roles instead of me assigning roles, pretty much. And early in the season, I think we just had a hard time figuring out what those roles on the team were going to be. And, and, you know, we had some position change. Uh, Zach Wessels, our point guard, who's a very special player, a tremendous player, um, had played off guard last year. We didn't play him at the point a whole lot. And I think it was a transition for him to move to the point guard. Um, and then, uh, you know, we were playing some young kids who didn't have a varsity experience last year. Um, Two of our seniors, Nathan Schwab and Guliatha Boyle, were playing JV last year, and there was a transition moving from JV to varsity. Uh, sophomore guard Brett Lucas was playing JV last year, so there was a transition for him moving so up to varsity. So there was development. That, so there was development that needed to take place, and you, quite frankly, all the off-season stuff, while it helps, it's not quite the same as the season. Um, so I just think we just needed to sort of feel our way out a little bit, and we, quite frankly, we had a tough. Uh, a loss before Christmas uh, at Rochester Mayo, and uh, we just had to sort of reevaluate things. And I think the best thing that happened for us was over Christmas break not having to play a game because it allowed us the opportunity just to work out the kinks. Um, and then we came back after break with some games and really played well early on. And from then on, things just flowed and right. It, it and really guys played into those roles. It seemed to feed off itself game by game by game. Was there some point? at that time when the train was moving and you were thinking, we, we can really do something here. Was there a turning point for you? Well, the, the wins against Mankato East were big for, from, from my end of it um, because we knew they were an extremely talented team, a senior dominated team, one that probably preseason wise was ranked ahead of us and probably thought to be the conference favorite going in. And we come out at home and we were up by 20 at one point, then we held off in a furious uh, late rally that they had, we were able to hold them off and win. And I think that let me know that, okay, we're starting to turn the corner a little bit. We won a close game. And then when we went two east, we were ahead by eight again with four or five minutes left. They came back, hit a half court shot at the buzzer. And then for us to come out in overtime and make plays and, and win going away in the overtime, I tell you what, that, that's fortitude, that's character, that's having good players who are able to take the other team hitting a half court shot, a momentum changer and not letting that bother you and go out and still play and make plays to win a game. And that jam dunk, that special play yeah. at New Prague to squeak out a victory and go to state, that must have been pretty special. It was because for most of the year, I just rolled out the basketballs and didn't have to worry about close games <laughs> and just let the players do their thing. So I, I think that was probably the game that I got paid for this year uh, because it was uh, the, the, probably the, one of the few games where I actually had to coach a lot during the game. But uh, no, it came down the stretch and we had a play in the back of our mind that we thought would work. Uh, obviously, it's a play that takes uh, uh, an amount of high execution. And uh, thankfully, the boys executed extremely well, starting with a, a Boyo running the point, setting the back screen, uh, to Wessels making a great pass, um, Schwab being able to reverse the ball, and then obviously, Joe draws attention and, and Tom runs that baseline and is open. And they look so nonchalant when they're doing their their pre-moves, like, yeah. oh, nothing's going on here, yeah. really, and then, boom, the play happened, and like you said, Zach Wessels with that perfect pass. Yeah. Has to be there. It, it has to be there. Well, there's no question. Easily, you can throw it off the board or throw it wide, whatever, but, uh, you know, we feel like we've got two pretty special players on both ends of that, on the front side and back side, and they both made plays, and, you know, as a coach, it's nice to be able to run a play where you can trust your Trust your guys on the floor to go execute it. So you head to state from there to Williams Arena, first time in 30 years against a tough St. Paul Johnson yeah. squad, leading at halftime by two, I believe. You were up two at half. Yeah. And uh, uh, just the last few minutes came up a little bit short, uh, making it to state, but had to be a, a rough moment for you. It was. It was disappointing. Uh, quite frankly, we were hoping to win a state championship. Uh, we knew going in St. Paul Johnson was going to be an extremely difficult game for us. We played them in fall league, 
and they beat us pretty good, beat us by probably 20 to 30 points in a fall league game. So we knew what they were like athletically. But like we said earlier the season, it's a different story. Um, we thought we had a good chance to win. Their speed is something that we cannot simulate in a practice. Um, they have great team speed, and they wore us down early on, and we just sort of survived the first half, and thankfully we were able to make some shots at the end of the half to take a lead. In the second half, again, I think that speed just wore us down, and uh, quite frankly, some guys got tired. And down 64-52 there with about four minutes left, you think it's over. Clawed your way back. And guys made plays. Uh, Boyle got to the basket, made a couple great plays at the basket. Joe AC hits a three, Tom AC hits a three, Zach Wessels hits a three, and we're right there and at 68-66 with 30 seconds left. And unfortunately, we had to foul, and the guy who fouled was a guy we didn't want to foul. And Joe AC ends up fouling out, and that really, really hurt us because then when they went to the free throw line, they, they, they missed free shots. throws. They missed some free throws, and we didn't get the rebounds. And if we get those defensive rebounds, we at least have a shot to go ahead or win the game. And that was disappointing. Um, but your fans supported you there, and uh, you had great fan support and community support. It really brought us together, brought the community, the yeah, region together. I cannot say enough about uh, our community and our support. Um, it was really special. And we've got special kids on our team. Uh, and and the community's been very special to us. And can't say enough about the crowds and the sea of red that was at Williams Arena. That was great. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Coach, again on a, on a fantastic year and for your leadership of these young, young people. Well, thanks a lot. It's, it's, been a, it's been a great ride, and it's pretty easy when you've got great kids from great family backgrounds, and uh, it's made my job pretty easy. Coach Chris Fadness. Thanks much, Coach. We'll meet a few of those Austin players in just a few minutes. Coming up next, the road to state one game at a time.
joining me now are starters from this year's tournament team. Senior Guglia Boyo and junior Tom Acey, along with Coach Gentleman. Welcome. Well, congratulations on all your success this year. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, I know, folks, that we're sitting here and we all look like we're the same height. But just to dispel any uh, illusions along those lines, let's. Uh, would you mind standing for our audience so we can do a little comparison? Coach, you too. I'll just stand in the background. Okay. <laughs> See, and I'm closer to the camera, so I look taller. So actually, if I stood here, see, are, very, are you six, what? Six, four, six, six, five. Six, five. Six, five so. yeah, yeah. Did it say that in the program, Coach? I no, thought they I said six, a eight. Grew as the season went on. Yeah. <laughs> I was six, two. You were six, two in the program. <laughs> yeah. But number one in your hearts. Uh, Coach, uh, we were talking during the break that you've grown, they've grown up in programs, uh, basketball programs. You've known them for many years. That's the way it is with a lot of these students to talk about these two guys. Yeah. Well, Tom and his, his cousin Joe and a couple of his other classmates, they've been coming to our camp since they were in first and second grade. And we run those biddy camps. And so I've known Tom almost his whole life. And uh, it's been a lot of fun just to watch his development and progress through the years. And Aboyo moved in in the middle school years and <laughs> got to know him, whether that was good or bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's early he talking on, about? But, Come uh, on. No, he knows I'm joking around. But, uh, but uh, obviously, it's, it's been a pleasure coaching these two guys and Aboyo. Um, you know, really, his game just really took off, uh, especially from sophomore year on. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of fun. And on defense especially, do you both train uh, some of the time for defense and some of the time for offense? Or are you just playing during practice? Or do you, uh, Guliath, do you do defensive drills yeah. specific? Because you always seem to be around the ball, always able to make something happen to get the ball turned over. Uh, is that something that's practiced? Yeah, like the first drill we do at practice is defensive slides with everybody do. And it's pretty fun. And other things, I mean the ball yeah. handling, because that's uh, the way you're able to grab the ball and take it away from somebody. Uh, I just always, always like good at ball handling, but as I gotten taller, this is getting bad because my arm, my legs are long, way longer than my body, <laughs> so it's kind of like ah. Tom, you, you, you too. As far as defense, do you do those same kind of drills? Yeah, um, every practice we do um, like defensive slides and stuff like that. But a lot of it's just um, just awareness and just knowing where you're at on the court. Could you tell uh, partway through the season, as the games, as Coach mentioned, after Christmas, you started winning quite a few. Did you start thinking we're out, we got to have a good thing going here? Yeah, definitely, especially after Christmas um, when we started stringing the wins together and we, um, after we beat East the second time, we um, could really tell it was a special year and we had a special team going compared to um, some of the years prior. Did everybody start getting serious then? Oboyo, was it like, did everybody's attitude change when you started winning, like uh, getting nervous or serious or was it the same group of guys? Uh, it's pretty much the same group of guys, but we started filling in our roles. You know, we knew what we we're gonna do some of us, we didn't, maybe you didn't score a lot, but you played maybe defense and you passed the ball. So that's a role. Yeah, that's that's role. something that coach is encouraging for each individual. Yeah, and like I said before, I mean, I, I don't want to tell them what their role is per se. I want them just to evolve into it and work into it and start to understand it for themselves. I think that's usually the way it works out best. Uh, obviously, if, I, if you've got to tell a player what he should be doing and shouldn't be doing out there, uh, sometimes that can be a negative because that player may not want to do it that way. What was it like uh, being out on that court? Let's, uh, uh, O'Boyle, oh let's take the uh, New Prague game uh, that sent you to state. Yeah. And that last second play, you had to run that kind of decoy play and go in and set the, the pick to, to make it happen. Yeah. And then it goes in, fans go crazy. What was your reaction then? Uh, I wasn't. I was excited for Tom, but I didn't play my best game, you know. So I wasn't kind of felt like I was letting the team down. But after Tom did that play, I was happy for him and the team. So it felt good. Yeah, what you were tackling each other out there at center court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what went through your mind after that ball went through the hoop? It was kind of surreal because um, it's been so long since we've been to state, and it kind of felt like we got away with one because we really didn't play it our best game and um, we had some people step up in the second half with Zach Wessels and he really put his team on the back and led us to the win. And then going to Williams Arena, mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when fans go there it looks really big 
as an arena. If you're playing in Packard Gym all year, did it feel big when you first walked in to take a practice? Yeah, it's just different. It's way longer than what we're used to. So, like, our press, we had to back up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Is it, yeah. is it different uh, yeah. dimensions? Yes. Uh, the high school courts in most gyms are, are 84 feet. And when you get into tournament play and you start playing on some of the college courts and pro courts, it's 94 feet long. So you've got an extra 10 feet of, of basketball. So, you know, in a, in a lot of ways, when you get to tournament play, it's really a different type of game. So uh, as we got into... Uh, the section games in Rochester and then at Williams, it's a little harder to press because teams can spread you out more and use that extra oh. uh, length on the court. And I thought New Prague in, uh, in our game against them really did a nice job of spreading us out in our press. Um, thankfully, we were still able to make some plays at the end. Um, and then Johnson, what with their speed and athleticism, we really had to back it off because we, we were just, by, by pressing them up as much as we were, we just gave them more room to use their speed and, uh, and, and spread us out. So you've got to, it's a different game. Mm -hmm. And games tend to be closer in uh, tournament play just because of the way you can attack mm -hmm. and do some things with those longer courts. And I know it didn't come out at state you know, he came short, but against St. Paul Johnson uh, did not prevail. Uh, but even so, I mean, was it, it must have been thrilling to be there, probably not after the game, but now that a little time has passed, what are your reactions to having been there? It was an experience of a lifetime, really. Um, not, not many people get a chance to play on that type of court in that type of arena with that many fans that came to the game. It seemed like our whole school went. Um, I think we had like seven fan buses go. So um, it was just a really fun time, and we tried to enjoy it as much as possible. What, what are your thoughts after having let a little time pass mm -hmm. from that experience? What do you take away from it? Yeah, just like Tom said, it's an experience of a lifetime, you know, and having all our fans coming out and supporting us, even with the loss, they just still support us, and it's really tremendous and awesome feeling. Now, I know you're just a junior, or you're a junior. I shouldn't yeah. say just a junior. But uh, have you thought anything about life after high school, what do you want to do? Um, I hope that I can play some college basketball somewhere um, if things work out for me. Care to tell us where right, on this program right here where you're looking? Um, I'm looking at some N NSIC schools right now, so, uh, some Division II schools in the Midwest. Ah, okay. But you've got a senior year of ball. Yeah. Got another crack at the state title. Uh, boy, oh, this was it for you, senior year. Yeah. Uh, graduation, future. What are your future plans here um, in the as in right now, I'm going to go to Riverland for one or two years, staying back to help out my family and hoping to play basketball here. So we could see you playing for the Blue Devils maybe at yeah. Riverland this year. That would be wonderful. Yep. And, uh, and so basketball is still, I don't know, a lot of things you do, if you do it a lot, they don't be, they're not fun anymore. They get to be kind of a drag. Are there days when you didn't, all those practices and all those summer practices, did you ever tire of it uh, there must have been times yeah um it gets it's a long season especially when you play all year round and um we just try to make it fun and not let the pressure get to us and just um and try to have a good time and just really enjoy the game and same thing yeah it's the same thing as you said like with the players that we have everybody's we all like comedians so <laughs> going to practice is pretty fun and getting yelled at by coach all the yeah. time because I would mess, <laughs> I'd mess up on plays. It's been two years, like, the same play. I, oh, boy, what are you doing? And I'll just like, oh, this again, you know. So practice is pretty fun. Getting yelled at is fun, coach. You know what? You I'm, really, right I'm, I'm really proud of this guy because I was really hard on him for the last uh, few years. And uh, just for him to weather my storm, I think, says a lot about his character and the uh, type of person he is. So I'm really proud of what... Uh, what a boy has accomplished here as a student athlete here at Austin. That's wonderful. And, and to all the seniors and all the players, yeah, there's too. No, there's no question. We had great leadership with our seniors, Nathan Schwab, Zach Vierkant, Ryan Larson. I mean, they all stepped up and, and were great leaders and really sacrificed and gave of themselves for the greater good. And, and uh, again, just men of great character. Well, good luck, gentlemen. Tom, Juliet, yeah, O'Boyle, thank you very much for coming into our show. Yeah. Continued success, and again, congratulations yeah, thank thank you. You. to you Thanks. all on a wonderful season.
Well, that will do it for this wonderful look back on a historic season for Austin and its basketball team. Special thanks to the administration of Austin High School for their cooperation on this project. I'm Eric Olson. Thank you for watching this special presentation of KSMQ Public Television. One Wild Ride, Austin Boys Basketball 2012, here on KSMQ, supported in part by l and Boiler Systems, Baudler, Mouse, Foreman, Kreitzer, and Wagner, and the smart choice, Usum Chevrolet. One Wild Ride, Austin Boys Basketball 2012, additional partners are Ameriprise Financial, Davis, Thone, and Kramer, Paul Warleen, and Warleen Funeral Home, and State Farm Insurance Agent Greg Meyer.